attendance. Dhruv, let's just begin. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, you want to share your screen? Yeah, yeah. So how any of you guys uh, ever tried to run the UI itself? Yep, I have. OK. Uh, uh, trying. Uh, I have started doing all this stuff. I have uh, installed WSL2. And right now, I have set Docker on my Windows. Uh, I'll do it by today itself. Okay, for people who have not done it, let me tell you the main dependency right now. If you want to run the uh, run the UI itself, is uh, is npm and Node.js. You need that basically. It will install React and all the other dependencies for you itself. I will send all those links afterwards after the meeting ends. But yeah, you can download uh, if you download Node.js, npm would be downloaded along with it. It's like a package manager, which will install all the dependencies you need for running the UI. Okay. And uh, there are certain parts of UI, which would be only accessible if you have the backend running and you also have a mini cube cluster running alongside it, along with a, along with a mesh tree adapter. But uh, let's start with the part where we only need the, uh, only need the npm part where we only need the node.js and react part right so for that basically uh, fork the uh, meshery repo and then like download it and once it is set up go to your meshery directory right i'm already over there now has any one of you heard of make files there is, uh, when you go through the meshu repo, there is something called as a make file over here. Mm -hmm. It is not, it is yeah. nothing but, yeah. Okay. For people who don't know, it is basically you group up uh, a lot of, it is a very bad summary, but if you group, group up a lot of command and when you run a particular tag, which you are given to a group of command, it will run them all together. So there are a lot of like, reconfigured things which people do a lot while messing with meshery and they have already been sort of over here so you don't have to do it all over again and for the ui part first what we need to do is uh, uh, install all the dependencies this is a thing which you will do only for the first time after you have installed node.js and npm right and uh, uh, the command for it is over here, set up UI libs. It will go to the UI directory, uh, install all the dependency and go out. Right. So basically go to your ter terminal, right? Make set up UI libs and just run it. I already have all the things installed. It will just check once again, if everything is installed or not, or anything has to be updated. And yeah, I guess I have one of the updates which I need to do. So that is the first thing which you would do after you have you have uh, for clone the repo itself, right? And after you have done that, if you want to run just the front end part, uh, there is also one more group of commands called run UI dev, right? This will go to the UI directory. It will run a dev server in which your front end will load and then it will come back. So if I do that right now, the, uh, the command would be make run UI dev. And once I do that, it will open up a port uh, 3000 port in which my front end will load. But bear in mind, uh, some part of uh, the front end itself is not accessible if you don't have the back end running and a uh, adapter and a uh, uh, adapter and uh, your kubernetes cluster attached to it so the only thing which you can really uh, see right now would be the performance page uh, and the uh, let me say this and the settings page, but I can't seem to 
click on the settings of zoom thing is coming in between and the setting page itself wait let me do this so if you want to make changes in the ui over here then yeah you can just run the ui dev command you don't need to run the back end itself but all the other pages it will not load properly like the management page wouldn't load properly because it is not connected to connected to an adapter itself the result page will also not show itself it will show an error because the back end is not running right now so now let's see how do we run the ui along with back end and then if you want to make changes so i will just go back i will i will interrupt this uh, process so that yeah and for this you would need a uh, golang install in your system right because the uh, back end runs on golang itself and we also have a handy uh, handy make file tag which we have made for this and that would be uh, run local right but before we do that there's one more thing which you need to do when you run it locally the ui need to be exported before you run it locally and uh, the command for uh, building the ui itself would be build ui over here right so you would run make build ui first before running the back end server itself and it will build the current version of what changes you have made in the ui itself or even if you have not made it will build the ui for the back end and yeah basically after that happens we would just run um, uh, run local command which will uh, run the back end itself along with the exported ui which we just did using this command and you don't need to worry about the back end stuff if you don't really get it because you are just messing with the front end itself so don't let it scare you and make run local right so these are all the commands that it will run and after uh, every command has been done it will open up a port at 9081 where your where you can interact with mesh reads along with the backend right so uh, the so server is listing on 9084 so if i just move over here and open up you see uh, here we have yeah a backend running now i can like go on the results page itself it will load itself doing a performance page but still i cannot access the management page because it requires us to configure the mesh reed itself with a, a kubernetes environment and a service mesh adapter right uh, so if you want to make changes in the management ui itself then you need to connect connect uh, your mesh reed with uh, a local uh, kubernetes deployment and a uh, adapter itself now to do that uh, the easiest way to run a kubernetes cluster is installing minikube on your system itself uh, it is a very it basically is a very it's not a very big cluster it has only one node and everything is in there and uh, the layer for uh, there is also a document in mesh reed which will like you go through how to set up minikube once you have installed it right and and after you do that you uh, it will also tell you to make a copy of your uh, configuration of your kubernetes cluster this is important because this is at the end what we will need to uh, link it up to the mesh reed itself right you can follow this after you have installed minikube uh minikube basically all the commands which you will need in minikube are three commands one is uh, 
mini cube start you start the mini cube itself after you have installed it now uh, like they have given some more specifications if you run on this uh, it would be better and then uh, if you want to stop the mini cube you can stop it after you are done with everything with mini cube stop which i am not going to do right now because it is already running i need to show you and there's also a, a command called mini cube status right which will tell you if your mini cube is running or not my mini cube is running i'll just configure and yeah when after it's configured i can make a copy of the configuration itself using this command uh, and yeah if i do it uh, there is a config mini cube yaml which is created and saved in my root directory itself and and now we also need a meshty adapter itself to connect to the to connect uh to connect to the mesh itself over here so what we can do is uh i usually uh, uh you can go through any of the adapters which meshri has for this example i i will use meshri kuma right it is a adapter uh for the kuma mesh itself you can like uh, you can uh, fork it and you can uh, then clone it to your system itself and uh, like i have cloned it in my system where is it mm. yeah meshri kumar right and then it also has a make file and you have you have to just run one command you, even if you don't know how meshri kumar works it's all fine you could just run make run right is only one command you need and uh, this you would also need golang as install in your system to run this and if you enter this command basically it will open up a port at 10007 uh 10007 uh note that the port may be different for a different adapter which you are using like suppose if you are using meshri sto then the port would be different for that and basically now what i will do is i will i'll go to uh, uh meshi itself first i will configure the kubernetes cluster itself which i deployed using minikube remember i had a configuration file which i saved locally called minikube config uh, i would just click over here and over here mini uh, config underscore minikube.yaml i will just click on it it will try to connect to it and yeah it just connected and then i will go to service meshes and over here since we are running it locally i would write local host and the port itself in this case it would be 1007 right and then i would press on generate itself and yeah so now my adapter is also linked so if i now go to management now the page loads now you can make change in ui itself and you can see what's messing around or mess around with it and one more thing to note is while you are running this in 9081 port every time you make change you have to build the ui once again for the back end which i did uh, before using the command uh, i wrote a command called make build ui right to make the command for the back end so if you want to skip it there is a clever trick which you can do it's basically run the back end server itself uh because you need it running and run the deployment server along with it uh which was run what was it i forgot mm run ui dev right run ui dev this basically will run a run a run our ui in a development phase so you don't have to build it every time you make a change and you can see the change uh, while you are changing the files itself and if i do this now the development server itself would be getting its data from the back end which we are running over here right so now even in 
uh, the local host 3000 port. I would be able to access the management page, right? And over here, if suppose I make changes, I would instantly see it because it's a development server instead of in uh, 9081 port where you need to build it every time. Um, yeah, so that's it. Now you can mess around with the UI itself, which is in the UI folder in Meshery. And yeah, change a component, see what happens and explore it in questions. Any questions, anybody? Uh, not to, uh, just a silly question. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Are we following some kind of means when I just change something and if I need to suggest, uh, what kind of a coding structure are we following? Best practices or something like that, so that um, I can keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, yeah, yeah, I totally forgot about that. Over here, we, we are following the ES lint format for proper coding. And in the make file, uh, see what he's telling about is, uh, suppose I'm over here, I'm changing this component. I add a new uh, constant over here, like constant ABC, which is equal to something value. And I will like return a, return something val i will return val itself or something like that now while i am writing it we use a uh, we use certain linter called eslint to check whether it is formatted properly or not or whether you have defined variables properly or not or whether if you have defined a variable then it is um, then it is used or not right so every time you push a commit you have you would have seen it in uh, seen it in a PR that it is uh, doing some checks, right? And there's also a yes. UI check. In that UI check, yeah. basically they check for the ES lint part. Is there any error or not? So if you want to check it locally itself, we we do have a, a command for them in make file itself. Uh, it is It should be called run UI lint, if I remember correctly. Yeah, run UI lint. It will basically... Uh, uh, check all your UI code and see if there is a linting problem according to the ESLint. And if there are certain problems which can be fixed itself by the ESLint, like suppose there is an alignment problem because there is a certain structure uh, ESLint follows that you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, have something defined like this because it doesn't look good. No one can read it. So if uh, certain errors which are which can be uh, automatically be resolved when you run the command, uh, run the command, uh, run UI lint, it will automatically change it for you. And if it can't change it, it will tell you that, see, over here, there is a mistake. You, you need to change it. So uh, you, you should always run the run UI lint command before you are pushing the changes or, or else you will get an error while you are uh, yeah, while you are, uh, while you, while you make a PR, right? So this, this is an important part which should make sense. And yeah, anything else? I, I will share the links and few steps which I have written in the, if I just, uh, yeah, rough steps which I have written, I will share it with you. If you haven't got it, but if you still have any questions, I can answer them. Yep, that would be great. Um, could you add a link to the meeting minutes? To the instructions? Yeah, yeah, stuff? sure, sure. I will do that. Great. All right. So I guess uh, if someone has questions, or I can stop sharing. Does anybody else have any questions? All right. Thank you, Drew so much yeah sure great all right uh, moving on hmm. uh, we are a little bit short in attendance today but i'll still go ahead with this
and we can point it out in the newcomers channel for anybody who missed out on the meeting. Uh, please do add your names here. If you see the um, first topic here, anybody who wants to work with Colang, with um, CSS, HTML, React, Jekyll, uh, we have a couple of site projects going on, which either use Jekyll or Gatsby. They were introduced in the last call. So if you missed out on that, please do watch the recording. You'll find them on the YouTube channel. Uh, a link should be here. Post that. Whichever section of the layer five projects that you want to work with, whichever domain that you want to expand in, all you have to do is add your names here. You can also ping anybody on Slack in the community. Any of the community managers, or anybody on the call today, I'm more than sure they'll help you out. If you need um, a direct entry, all you need to do is comment your name here and we'll get back to you. Moving on, for further tutorials, uh, we are planning on a session on a certain set of meshery tutorials. This was today's, was the second one on meshery UI. The last one was taken up by Anurinth, another community member on uh, setting up and getting started with meshery. You will find a setup guide here. In case anybody missed out in the meeting, you'll also find the actual tutorial on video in the recorded meeting. Again, if anybody missed out, please do go ahead, watch the recording. I'm sure you'll learn something. I did. Um, Dhruv will be adding his instruction guide here soon. Yeah, I did. Yep, yeah, uh, he did. So if you are still wondering on how to work or how to set up Meshri, this would be a, one of the best places to start because you won't get other video tutorials. We do have documentation in this, but anybody who prefers a video tutorial or somebody labeling out the steps, this really would be the best place for you to start out. Um, if you have any issues with the prerequisites or with installing the prerequisites or you stumble upon any roadblocks, you are very welcome to post it as an issue to ask questions on Slack, on Git, or even in the meeting minutes here. Please speak up here if you have one to. And we'll get back to you. Other than that, for future tutorials, um, we labeled out a couple of um, possible options. If you want any particular tutorial, you can add it here. If you want to have um, a sort of voting system, go ahead, comment here for any of the tutorials that you want to see. And we'll set it up. These tutorials are usually taken up by somebody in the community, by people who have worked with these. They usually put in some time, come and talk to you and spend 30 minutes explaining things to you, which is a big boom in case you are trying to understand it by yourself and are stumbling upon things. This would be a big help. Also, these meetings are for you. If anybody wants to speak up, please do. You're very, very welcome to. Uh, the meeting minutes are also a communal effort. So if you, if you don't see your name here, please go ahead and add it. If you want to talk about any certain topics or if you have come upon issues while either starting peers or solving any of the issues on the, any of the repos across the projects, please speak up. Now would be the best time to do so. Because you've heard me rambling enough. All right, um, you're free to do so throughout the call. Moving on, um, we'll probably have a tutorial on MeshUTL's CLI on how to set it up, how to work with it, how to um, work through the command structure. Before that, if somebody wants a bit of homework, <laughs> just a, uh, some documentation or some reference sources for you to go through, this would be a good place to start, as good as anywhere, anywhere else. Uh, the quick start guide to Meshery CTL is basically the documentation that we have, which is a wonderful place to start because unless you hit some roadblocks, you'll be good to go. 
you can set it up, you can play around with it, you can work through it, and you can understand it before you can start contributing to the projects, which is again a good thing. It takes some time getting used to it. So the doc starting out with the documentation on any project basically is a good idea. Um, all right. I'd recommend you to go through these two first before jumping onto the mesh material design spec because that's more of a uh, in-depth resource, so to speak. Um, all right. Does anybody else have any questions, any things to bring up? Uh, hey, this is Lee. Hey, uh, I do. There's... Hi. Hey guys, hey, um, I'll refrain from comment on Dhruv's tutorial. <laughs> so, um, and say that there is, and that was Dhruv, that was a joke, by the way. <laughs> there is uh, uh, one thing that we could do uh, for this call um, is to get more butts in the seats uh, because there's you know, because Pratik is getting a first class uh, show. <laughs> I think we had um, another newcomer on the call for a little bit, but probably wasn't into React, and so she took off. Um, this meeting, um, no one is invited to this meeting. Um, and so I, that's a note that I've made a couple of times. Um, I wonder if people don't know that it's there. Like unless they're getting, unless they're in Slack and getting the notification before it starts, they're likely to forget about it, right? Because like most people do not subscribe to the Layer 5 community calendar. That would be the only other way that they would see it. So uh, um, a couple of things that we might do to, um, to um, help encourage some participation and uh, we shouldn't go encourage participation unless it's needed and like, you know, unless people, um, there are newcomers and they want to learn things. And um, I'm totally convinced that there are, We've, you know, rarely have we seen an influx of people coming um, up until the point that, that we talk about first time contributions and people just flood in like, people really do need tutorials and help and assistance in a warm, nurturing environment to do some of those things in. And each of you um, represent, you know, each of you have been doing that and are doing that. There's a couple of thoughts that might help with, um, well, help with maybe overloading you with just people in here trying to do things. So one is, um, one is that we can invite um, the, you know, the 800 or, or, or so people that are on our mailing list to this call so that they know that it's there. Or we could make a separate mailing list that just, you know, that has um, individuals that we know that are more or less newcomers and, and add that list to the invite. Um, the other thing is uh, to create a questionnaire. So the questions we have at the top of this meeting minutes, I think are um, or they're, they're in Sridi, if you scroll up, there's a couple, they have a couple of ideas about things that people might like to see, and it's n intentionally not exhaustive. I mean, Dhruv just gave one on Mesh or UI, so which is inherently on React and Next.js. Um, also, Pratik, um, so that you're aware, we use uh, Billboard JS as well inside of the uh, uh, Meshery UI. Um, Dhruv is actually working on another project that uses Cytoscape JS, which is which always gets people drooling, drooling, drooving, <laughs> which always gets people drooling. Um, another idea is I can't share my screen. Um, uh, actually, um, Shridi, if if you don't mind, maybe stop sharing for a moment. I'll, I'll share an idea and see if you guys sure. what you think. This is kind of aimed. At, well, it's really aimed at all of you that are on the call, including Pratik, but, but I guess I was um, 
also thinking specifically of Ruth and uh, you know what it's, it's it's directed at all of you actually so and this is the notion that I, I was just a few minutes ago starting to create a questionnaire basically the same things that we were just asking um, in the doc to have a questionnaire that people could fill in that um, Ruth or Kaleche or um, Dhruv and Sridi and Pratik or any any of you if, if you wanted to if we wanted to tweet this out or get this in front of people the, the, the questions are wrong. Like I would, it's, it's a draft. So I wouldn't read like any of these. These are not the right questions. Um, but it would basically be saying, hey, you know, explain that layer five is um, generally pretty warm and, and pretty welcoming and tries to help and support people. And, and uh, we've got purposeful mm -hmm. meetings like this one set out and channels mm -hmm. and things just for you know, first time contributors, whether to our projects or to open source in general. Uh, to explain that, send this out, ask for some input, and uh, kind of get a schedule going. Get, uh, um, I think, a, a mesh CT. Yeah, I think there's like a long list of things to potentially show people, things that are specific to our projects, but things that are just um, useful in general. So if, if we did a mesh CTL, um, and Pratik mesh CTL is the command line client, it's the CLI that goes to mesh itself. Um, well, that's a good tutorial and it, it, it's a tutorial on not only mesh CTL, but it's also a tutorial on uh, Go Cobra and Go Viper, like two very popular frameworks that are commonly used for creating CLIs in Go. And so um, kind of like we would potentially be instructing people on GitHub and PRs um, and we, how we might be showing them about Git and um, signing off commits and things, but that can be done in context of showing them a, you know, how to fix the docs or something like that. So uh, I mentioned this and um, I think that for any of you that give a tutorial, um, I know for my part, one of the best ways for me to learn is in fumbling through trying to explain something to others. Um, so this is both two questions in one. It's do you do y'all think that we should make such a questionnaire? And if so, implicitly you're signing up to um, deliver a tutorial. It's a low pressure environment, clearly. What do you think? I think it's great. And yeah, and by the way, you uh, just to be extremely clear, um, no one has to agree. <laughs> oh, don't don't give me a uh, a uh, don't placate me with a nice uh, well, you know, good idea, Lee. But we'll. <laughs> hey, this would be great. Uh, I guess. Uh, right now, like from next month, we are having October first, so idea. I guess. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, we yep. just had a, it's just a delay, but yeah, please. Yeah, Lee, yeah, I was suggesting like, uh, if you make this tutorial right now, um, like in the next two, three days or something like that, uh, then Hacktoberfest is coming next month. So a lot of, a lot of new people would be coming onto the open source and they would be looking up at Hacktoberfest labels. So, uh, like, we can spread the word about it. We can just uh, make a label beginner issue with Hacktoberfest and have a Git tutorial and some, and some easy, uh, like this tutorial today, it, it made a lot of sense for me to start contributing. We can do a lot, uh, like, uh, making it beginner friendly so people would come and contribute. That's such, that's such a great suggestion, Pratik. The you're so right about Hacktoberfest, and if for no, so I I totally agree. And and if we go forth with a questionnaire, like timing it with that and sort of interplaying with Hacktoberfest is a great thing to do. We've been spending um, we've been investing a bit more and more into sort of contributor onboarding. Um, 
and folks like Ruth and Kaleche have been like almost entirely focused on that and been doing a really good job of being of welcoming people and getting them set up and successful and, and actually um, Kaleche, for my part, anytime I get a ping from you on an open an issue that's been open and is kind of starting to look stale i love it like uh i don't i don't know i'm sure that there are some people who don't like getting poked um but i don't care <laughs> i mean one i love it for myself and then two um i have to be honest and say i don't care if they don't like it Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I know it really helps. Uh, a lot of people come through with the best of intentions to um, make a contribution and pick up an issue. That's wonderful. And for all kinds of reasons, quite often, the reason being they just it was just kind of harder than they expected, uh, that a lot of people will pick it up and not come back. And that's totally fine. We just need to like, for them to signal and say, hey, can you go ahead and unassign it for me? so that someone else can pick it up. Uh, Pratik, I've got to go look up. So I think, I know we've got the Hacktoberfest label in a few of the repos, but this is um, something that we'll need to go around to the rest of the repos to make sure it's, it's there. And Shridi, with your elevated privileges at the moment, um, this is a good item for us to, one, make sure that in the layer five at the layer five org level, layer five IO, um, th there's a default set of labels that can be defined. I'm having one called Hack. I, I think there's already one there. Oh, in the default set? Okay, that'd be good. I, uh, yeah, we have to double check because I would, I'd bet you uh, a stipend that it's not. <laughs> I'll check. Okay. Um, but but it, it, you're right though that it we do have the label in the Hacktoberfest label in at least two of the repos, like the Meshery one and the Layer Five one. And so good, uh, Kaleche, your voice just wasn't audible earlier, but I'll oh, pay attention. Okay. Okay, um, the link of um, what they call their yeah, Discord um, server, I could share it there. Layer 5 repo link. Hey, yeah. Cool. I think that that's all it is for me. I, I thought this this kind of a thing might help. This is sort of a start to what that would be. Um, I'll make sure that all of, uh, actually all of you, including Pratik, should have the ability to edit this and kind of make it into something if we want to send it out. It, it should be configured, I think, to send the responses to um, a spreadsheet, yeah, so it, newcomer, layer five repo completion, good. Uh, that way, that way people can be encouraged to join the community and, and really like, for the most part, joining the quote unquote, joining the community. For us, I know it means different things to different groups, but for us, it probably means like joining Slack. You know, once people are in Slack, then, um, we can really sort of meaningfully engage and get them resources and stuff. And so, so cool. Maybe, maybe this is a good follow-up item for, for next week and sort of actually Hacktoberfest is what, like a couple of weeks away. So, um, all right, uh, Shridi, that's all I have. Okay. Okay, uh, moving on. The questioner is actually a very good idea could probably get this done by the next meeting. Let's hope to. 
other than that, um, let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, we have a couple of good first issues for anybody to pick up who wants to. Um, first of all, when you're looking through issues throughout the layer 5 repos across all the projects, uh, you can pick up any issue that is start as a good first issue or as help wanted if you think you can contribute. And if you think you can help, just uh, place a comment there, ping somebody on Slack asking to be assigned to the issue and I'm sure somebody will reply to you. Uh, apart from that, this is a good one for anybody to pick up. Uh, which basically is, yeah, I just remember. All right, uh, so this was about adding a community calendar on the website. I think Kush means the left five website. Yep. Okay, uh, so this is for anybody to pick up who wants to. Uh, there, there are enough comments here to pull you through. There are also enough uh, resources to pull you through. If you want to take it up, comment on the issue. There's a link in the meeting minutes. If you're hesitant about commenting on the issue, ping on Slack, it'll amount to the same thing. All right. Um, okay, for the next one. So what we we're planning to do is have a collage sort of um, user-based detail thing on a page here, which will basically include um, pictures and quotes from either users or people who have consistently worked on the repos. We compiled a couple of pictures, a couple of quotes, a couple of tweets that could go into the collage. So if anybody is into UI designing or basically web designing or works with Illustrator or Figma or anything equivalent, please ping me. I'll bring you up to date on this. We really need a volunteer here. So if you want to go ahead, please do. If you want to speak up right now, please do. Does anybody want to? All right. Okay, well, I then, guess Meshri yeah. has something like that collage kind of thing. Every, everyone's name if someone wants a reference or something. Do you mean the community page? Yeah. Um, yeah. Of, of Meshri itself, I guess. Not like that. Yep. Uh, so this was supposed to be a little bit different. Oh. It was supposed to be more of a... <laughs> no, that's completely fine. Uh, that is a genuine query. Um, this was supposed to be different in the way that it was not supposed to list out the community members. Instead, it was supposed to list out anybody who had um, invested time in the project. It was supposed to be more of a project-centric collage instead of a member-centric, so to speak. All right. Uh, I hope that explains it. Yeah, I hope that explains it. Uh, this, if anybody wants to pick it up, please ping me. I'll bring you up to date with the details. Another one here is, all right, so we have a couple of things that we want to include in the brand page. I hope my screen is visible. Um, is it? Uh, Ruth, is my screen yeah. visible? Yeah, your screen is visible. Great. All right, so um, we have a brand page on the LFI website, which basically states all the brand colors, the logos, everything that you ever need to make a template to basically do about anything else. And so here we need to include two more brand kits, which is the new MeshMate brand kit. So MeshMates is this program which Ruth and Kilichi have recently joined or been promoted to. Uh, MeshMates are, I'll actually show you the page. All right. So the mesh pay program is basically where you are assigned a mentor who will guide you through your first PR, through, through your first um, venture as you look into the projects, as you go through the projects and will help you along your way. You can see Kalichi and Ruth up here. So, um, yep. 
So we have a brand kit for that. There's a link to the brand kit here. It'll be converted to an issue soon enough. If it's not, um, go ahead and ping me. I'll set you up with the details. Another thing that needs to be added to the brand page is the Meshri operator brand kit. That hasn't actually been introduced yet. There'll be an issue for it soon enough, so keep an eye out. These are easy issues and can be solved very easily. And just gives you an easy way to make your first mark in the community. It mainly involves a bit of knowledge about uh, Jekyll, a bit of CSS, a bit of H basic HTML coding, nothing more. All right, uh, uh, Lee, are you still on call? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, could you explain this? Uh, oh I'm yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. No, this is a good. Um, let me come back in a second. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so recently we, as a matter of fact, um, as a matter of fact, I was just chatting with Anirudh. Let me poke him really quick because I think that this will um, save me a bunch of typing. Hopefully, so hopefully he can come on or we can just play back this recording to him. But um, yeah, re recently we had, by the way, is... I see Neil's picture there and I'm just waiting for him to join. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, so, you know, so with the pandemic, G Suite, um, Google had uh, lowered the, had added the ability for the entry level, business level um, plans uh, for G Suite to you to be able to have the ability to record Google Meet meetings, which was good, which helped with us recording and posting our meetings. Um, you know, a few months into the pandemic, it's time for them to remove it. And so they're taking away that ability and moving it to a higher echelon of the subscription plan that they have, which is something that Layer 5 isn't on. And so fine. Um, we do have. Um, this uh, Zoom account. And so it has the ability to record locally or record to the cloud. It also has the ability to stream live to YouTube. We actually don't use that um, for this call because we end up doing a little bit of video editing before we post the call. Usually it's just to try to paint some, some night makeup on my face before we post it. But um, the point is we have um, long proliferated the links to Google Meet, to, to our various meetings. We've proliferated them across um, any number of readmes, any number of Google Docs, any number of reminders in Slack, and like four other places that I'm not remembering right now uh, in the calendars themselves. And so as we go to switch out the link to the to where to join the meeting, which is exactly the issue that Anirudh is having right now. Hold on. The meeting, this meeting is for authorized attendee, attendees only. Oh. Sign into. That's an interesting thing. That's something um, Anirudh is trying to join right now. And he's saying that he's getting a message that says, this meeting is for authorized attendees only. Please sign into Zoom with an email address authorized for joining yeah, this I'm meeting. Yeah, I'm not very sure why that is happening. That happened to me too at the beginning. It didn't happen in the last two calls. Yeah, it happened to me too. I was also surprised. Ah, uh, that sucks. I wonder how many people got it because that probably that doesn't feel good at all. That messages. I bet yeah, what did it? Ah, okay. Yeah, and then and then what you guys did was you went to Zoom.us and you logged in. And then after yep. you've logged in with any account, you can join. But so yeah, I'm, I'm going to go change that while we're talking. Because I think that there's a there's an item. Yeah, there's a tick mark when you schedule the meeting, it says, um, you know, require that people have a zoom accounts or something something like that, like require that they are authenticated users, which I think when we were scheduling it, I took that to mean good. We won't get Zoom bombed with naked people dancing across the screen. Um, right. But maybe, maybe, maybe having some naked people dancing across the screen wouldn't be so. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <I'll>... um, 
Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, get, getting to the point on the meat. So there's a, a new repo that was created in layer five recently. And it's the repo name is meat is the name of the repository. Very simple repository. It runs GitHub pages. So it runs Jekyll and it um, really is there for us the singular purpose of providing um, URL redirection, so beautifying a URL and providing a redirection so that um, in the future, should we ever need to change Zoom accounts or change the links to things that we don't, that, that we've got some DNS, we, we've got a layer of indirection to play around with. So Shridi, if you visit the github.com slash layer five IO slash yeah. Well, Anirudh, just to explain real quick, um, we'll update the setting on Zoom. I think the setting that you were running into, all it requires is that you're an authenticated user, any user to Zoom. So we'll, we'll change that though. So we're just explaining the fact that we're moving from Google Meet to Zooms and outside of updating settings that we're just talking about that we also don't ever want to have to come back to update a bunch of fragile links, static links that point to a particular meeting. Because even this meeting, it's scheduled to go on for like any number of months. But at some point, we might have to reschedule it and maybe it'll get a new meeting number. And then we have to go update all the, all the places we've got it listed. And we will forget, you know, inevitably, we'll miss a spot. And that contributor will come by, um, you know, very, very excited to join and then walk away dismayed, thinking that they're not allowed to join. So here, if you click on, so this is a very simple thing that you can do in Jekyll. You, you, you can't do this in DNS directly because DNS doesn't work with, DNS works with host names and um, SRV records and MX records and a bunch of other things, but DNS doesn't work with um, URL paths. So if you wanted to set up a system in which you can redirect um, a URL, um, you can go to your DNS provider create a subdomain, which, which we did called meet. So it's just a subdomain meet.layer5.io that points to um, GitHub, GitHub's domain name. Um, I'm sorry, GitHub's name servers. GitHub. And when it does, GitHub, uh, Shridi, if you click on, there's a file called CNAME. So this is actually a great tutorial for, I don't know, the DevOps folks. Is uh, when you click on CNAME, what we've done in GitHub is register meet register the subdomain to point to this repo so if you actually visit meet.layer5.io you'll be directed to this repo and what you'll probably see is just contents of the readme that's in this repo um if you yeah go ahead and give it a shot which mean oh you know what i take it back that, that used to be what it did, but now that Shridi is making a uh, meeting table here, it'll redirect to, quote unquote, Maybe her meeting. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's just a system of redirects. And so. Yeah, I realize this might be confusing to anybody who does not know what's going on. So there'll be a table here with all of the meeting details, which is what the link will ultimately point to. And that's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the redirects. Um, if you go back um, on the repo, if you go back one to any of the HTML files, like the newcomers call or whatever. Yeah, here is just a simple com um, instruction to Jekyll to say, when you get a request at meet.layer5.io slash meshery, go ahead and redirect people to this Zoom. And so that, that would be what people would document. Like it was just kind of a, um, yeah, that's what I just said. All right. So we have a DevOps tutorial in free with the mesh UI tutorial today. And that's it. Uh, would we be documenting this by the way? Lee? Uh, yeah, I'll go put an issue up to describe that or just document it myself because it about, takes about the same time to uh, create the issue. <laughs>
<laughs> all right um that's it for today please people anybody on the call if somebody is not on the call i'll put a message on the newcomers group comment here it'll be worth your time i promise because this will be helpful for you and if you want any kind of tutorials and if you're getting started with the projects trust me you'll need tutorials it'll be helpful in a general way please go ahead and comment on this just a tick mark would do as well you don't need to write out long summaries on why you need the tutorial and that's it that's all for today thank you for listening to me blabber on <laughs> thank you Lee, for coming <laughs> thanks me for coming and thank you everyone yeah you did great <laughs> thanks everyone bye everyone yep. yeah bye, bye everyone bye, bye everybody bye. also uh Anirut, if you're still there uh we're taking the trouble because google meet isn't working and isn't allowing the recording feature anymore yeah. actually like even i'm using qsuit and it allows me to record i know if the change is a very recent one i think because it's a business account and not a personal account maybe mm, yeah but uh, I, I guess layer 5 has its own business account right yep so uh, usually meetings are hosted through that and recording must be enabled on that, right? It is. Uh, simply working with, I guess, Meet is better because having because Zoom always changes your link. So it creates a new link every time while for Google Meet, you could use the same link over and over again. You don't even have to regenerate. And if you have a community calendar of sort, you can actually have the link hard coded as how in my company, they do it. So uh, I just have a calendar invite, and in that, I have all the meeting details. I could simply use the G Suite for logging in and getting into the meeting without much of hassle. All right. I'm not exactly completely aware about the details. I'll get back to you on this. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Bye bye.